Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays, your weekly update on our Factorio with Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 run. Uh, sponsored by Trefoil.be for all of your uh, game server hosting. Now our biggest update this time I think, or the most important thing at least that I've been up to, is that I finally put down the, um, the rocket silo, the satellite rocket silo. And this is the building that, as you can imagine, launches the satellite rockets and this will get us not so much into space, but with all of the, but unlocks the, sort of the very start of space. So we'll have the navigation satellite that you can use to look around. We'll have the ability to see a little bit of what's going on in space. We'll have think, little things like, um, then we'll be able to move on to actually building the cargo rockets in order to get to space and start doing stuff up there. So this is a very big, very important step on the pro on, in, in the process of getting up there. But it's still only only a step in that direction. And so, well, in order to get this up and running, this was the building itself was okay. I, I built this in my pockets because you're never going to need more than one of these because you launch, you launch in, in space exploration, you launch your satellites at a, a relatively slow pace. You'll get, you'll send one up every so often. I think you, you do get a bit of data from them that you then use to make something else. However, you don't actually need to be launching them at a high rate. So I thought one of these would be enough. So I just gathered up all of the ingredients for it. And there's quite a lot of ingredients goes into one of these things. Um, I say quite a lot, quite a lot of quantity rather than in specific number. And for some reason, I can never find it because it's in. For some reason, it's in, in, in military rather than um, rather than logistics. And here it is: the um, the satellite rocket silo. So it's it's hundreds of things. So you need big electric motors, 200 advanced circuits, 100 pipes, a thousand concretes, and 500 steel plates. So, I, but I was able to grab all of that off the bus, load it into my inventory, and then pocket pocket craft this one massive building. Because as I say. There doesn't feel like much point in automating the construction of something when you're only actually going to need one of them. So yeah, I, I grabbed, but I grabbed all of the direct ingredients of that. So in order to get this working and to launch a rocket, we've got a whole four percent of the way through this so far. You need low density structure. In fact, what do, you, how, what do we quantities you need? You need one low density structure, one rocket control unit, three solid rocket fuels, and a heat shield tile. So the heat shield tiles are being made on this massive column up here and currently that's being limited by the supply of steel we've got coming in that said i say it's being limited by um we've got more of this than we actually need it's okay it's, it's coming through here it's trickling down all, all on one side not the other so we've got plenty we've got plenty of the um, of the heat shield tiles or even if we are using a few of them here and there um but the overall production is a little bit limited by the steel plates coming in and while i'm looking at this the um I'm reasonably pleased with the way I've got this being built. So the, uh, the, the heat shield tiles, at least at this stage of the game, before we get on to having <coughs> exotic things like iridium, are made from um, sulphur, stone tablets, and steel plates. Now the stone tablets, I did the maths here, and then and look, looking at the uh, this, uh, this takes 10 seconds to make. So that requires to, each of these requires two stone tab tablets per second. Down here we're making four of them every half second so eight per second so that that means um even i'm capable of dividing eight by two and then i put so i put in these four machines here that should then run in these should then run in at, at the same rate uh, the steel plates the uh, stone stone plates being used to use them all up now because of the uh, the fact that we've got an o we've got an overflow of them the machine isn't the machines aren't running quite in the, the expected way but i didn't think there's any point in sort of cutting gaps in the belt and or anything like that so it's easier just to make enough and then let them and learn let them flow who cares exactly where they end up as long as we've got enough being made it, it doesn't matter and and we have so the other there are two reasons to, to split it up like this rather than having all of the um all of the stone um what are they called stone stone tablet machines all together and then having all of the um heat shield tiles together. This way it means when I expand it I can just copy and paste a big chunk of it and put in five machines at a time. But also because if I tried to have more than say a couple of these machines running as you can see here you then end up filling up the side of the belt, the other side of the belt completely and you wouldn't have room for all of the uh, stone tablets you're trying to make. So having them in little self-contained units like this makes a lot of sense. The other big question is whether there's enough um, capacity on the belt for, for, uh, with it for the, on the sulphur belt for it going th for what's going through. Um, but at the moment, that doesn't really matter because the steel is actually the problem. And as you can see, we've completely run out of that. Um, we'll have a look at that in a moment because I think that is something we're working on but haven't actually fixed yet. But looking at the numbers, no, it's it's like more than 20 times as many stone tablets. So there's room for uh, certainly at least <laughs> at least eight. Mm, that's not very many, but we should be okay for that with that for a while. And the supply does seem to be all right. At least, it, if we're um, there's there's still plenty a plentiful supply on this side of the belt, even if the other side of the belt is quite empty. So yes, that's one of the ingredients needed here. 
The next one is uh, rocket control modules. These are pretty straightforward. Um, as you can see, by the way, we've got it, they're, they're fully backed up. It's just taking in the iron, the glass, the batteries, and the red circuits. And again, these are all things that we've got being made in, in decent quantities and then put onto the bus. So we don't need to worry too much about exactly where those come from. Just pull them off the bus. It does mean this, this sort of assembly ends up being quite wide because all of the different components have different subcomponents, and therefore you end up with an area that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tiles wide just to produce one thing and then the same again here now what I'll probably end up doing is at some point in the future we will need enormous quantities of low density structures so this will extend upwards or possibly it'll end up being moved off onto its own area and again I think low density structures are another thing where you later on in the game you can make them out of exotic materials as well and make them much much more cheaply so we'll be doing that later so I'll probably be moved off to a town and we'll just have them being brought in on the bus but for now it made sense to just build for at least for now to build them up in this in this area so we've got all of the ingredients for the um, for the for the building a rocket being made around here currently all of these are more than fast enough but that's most they're mostly more than fast enough because the rocket fuel is much 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 too slow so so far i did this right at the end of the last stream so this has just been slapped down in place and then not not really improved balanced or um expanded to the point it needs to be but the recipe for rocket fuel i've decided to use is the one that takes in iron plates, ammonia, and oxygen. And the reason for this is because it's basically free. So if we look at the possibilities for rocket fuel, we've got this one. It's also the first one in the list, and the first one in the list tends to be the easiest. So iron plates, ammonia, and oxygen. Ammonia is made from hydrogen and nitrogen. Hydrogen is made from um, water um, into oxygen and hydrogen, and that makes the oxygen I need as well. Um, and the nitrogen for the ammonia also comes out of the air as well. So this is basically entirely made out of free ingredients, apart from the little trickle of iron that's used up. There are other recipes as well. If I wanted to, I could also make it out of iron, hydrogen chloride and oxygen. Um, and the hydrogen chloride would be made from chlorine, chlorine and hydrogen, obviously. And the, and the chlorine comes typically from sand and water, which will also produce some of the hydrogen we need. So this is an alternative possibility. Um, however, it requires the sand as an additional input, so I thought I'd go for the one that's completely free. Um, how, um, because it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't require the sand. It's just, just completely self-contained here, apart from the little dribble of iron that's coming in. Now, finally, uh, Chat was talking to me about this and telling me I was doing everything wrong, and I should actually be using this recipe, which takes in iron plates, light oil, and oxygen. Um, and goodness knows where we're getting the oxygen from. Oh, from from an atmospheric condenser. Fair enough. As I am here, in fact. Uh, so this this one doesn't require you to use. It uh, doesn't require hydrogen, and therefore doesn't require the electrolysis plants. And apparently, the electrolysis plants are a massive waste of power. And looking at this, it does use quite a lot of power. We've got two two and a half megawatts being used there. So I think we'll start chucking some um, efficiency modules in this at the beginning of the next run. But the main reason I've not gone for this one is because the light we haven't really got our oil processing facilities up and running to to, to my satisfaction yet. And when we do. Potentially then we'll start using this recipe in the oil processing facility where the light oil will be hopefully plentiful and easy. We'll bring in iron by train, we'll bring in oxygen from the um, atmospheric condensers and then we'll be able to make massive quantities of rocket fuel just on site there and then, and then ship that out. We'll see, that, that'll probably be the way what we do when we need large quantities of rocket fuel. But for the time being, for this machine, we're only going to need a relatively small quantity of it. Relatively small, much much more than we've got at the moment, but relatively small in the whole grand scheme of things. So maybe doing it here like this will be acceptable. There is a fourth recipe as well, but this is for the future. This is used, uh, we haven't, re we haven't um, researched this one yet. But that, that takes it, apparently coal, iron, pyroflux, not, and a, a bit less oxygen. Maybe when we have a good supply of pyroflux, we'll, we'll do this. So perhaps when we go off to a, a pyroflux, where do you get from, to a vulcanite planet, we'll start making massive quantities of rocket fuel on the vulcanite planet out of this, assuming there's oxygen in the atmosphere there. Um, and then we'll have a and then we'll have a good supply of it that we, we can then ship around the um, the, the uh, star system by by rocket or by spaceship or whatever's needed. Which is sort of what I did in in my other run with the uh, with the oil rest based recipe for uh, making rocket fuel because I had a I had a facility on an oily moon that was producing massive quantities of rocket fuel and shipping that off to the space station so this may be a way to do it how long does it take five to produce 500 oxygen and this produces 300 oxygen every 10 seconds so that's not bad the problem with this this recipe is largely in the um, in the the, 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 the the hydrogen required in order to make the ammonia because the nitrogen you can just pull out of the air like this the oxygen you can just pull out of the air like this but the hydrogen is a little bit more difficult at the moment so at the moment we're making it here in this in this um, electrolysis plant, which is running 
flat out and producing the water, the oxygen and the and the hydrogen that we need here. But one of these machines is not enough, and it is the most expensive one. So are there, are there better ways of making hydrogen? Let's have a look. So hydrogen. So there's this recipe that I'm using at the moment, electrolysis. This is the exp This is the one that's rather expensive and, and um, in, in electricity, two and a half megawatts to produce two and a half megawatts for um, six seconds to produce 40 hydrogen. Alternatively, again two and a half megawatts for five seconds to produce 20 hydrogen. So this is actually worse, and it produces uh, chlorine, which I'd have to do something with. Uh, now, obviously, I could use that for the other uh, rocket fuel recipe. Maybe that would be a good one. Maybe that would be worth it, or we can get it out of a barrel. So, if we're making it from hydrogen, which I am at the moment, this is probably the best way to be doing it. Um, so this is is okay. I'll just need to put in. Um, few more of these like essentially and now we've got the bot so I can just do a copy paste this isn't quite going to be quite right because I've got the, that pipe on the bottom that's going to need to be fixed so that should actually be one of those then I can copy that and you see this, this is the this is the wonder of the of the, the bots now okay I don't have there's, there's some ground there's some water in the way but I can just do this um, and then fill in fill in the space there with landfill I've got two pieces of it which is just enough um, and then the bots will bring over some of these um, electrolysis plants and boom, suddenly we'll have uh, six times as much uh, of this being produced. And we'll have, the, have this being pulled through much more quickly. However, um, oh no, we've got, we've got quite a lot of headroom on the power supply there. So this will, this will be okay, at least for now. It's only two and a half megawatts, that's not so bad. So now these start buzzing away. We're now going to be able to start producing the uh, the rocket fuel much more quickly, and I would suspect that that's going to lead to something else. It's probably these machines now, the um, the chemical plants being the next uh, the next step. That's, um, that's that's the bottleneck. So I'll need to expand this out again, and so on and so on. But as you can as you can imagine, it's going to be now relatively easy to make this run a bit faster, produce the rocket fuel at the rate we're going to need it, and things will just work happily. And that'll be, that'll be nice. But for the time being, yes, we've got we've got the rocket. We're starting to build the, uh, the 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 satellite rocket. That's going quite well. So that's not the only thing I was doing. Um, the other the other big project I was working on was getting the core mining working a bit quicker. So over here we have our core mining drill. It's running. Uh, it's producing stuff at a stuff at a rate, should we say? Um, but not. I was going to say not quite the rate we're pulverising it at. Actually, at the moment we seem to have quite a um, a backlog of it. I wonder why just because there's so much going in okay cool maybe it's time to put in another column of these machines because one of the things I've done here is I put in a second column of pulverizers up here so we're now um, able to process this all twice as fast and um, we've got it's, it's mostly these belts actually these are not quite full but pretty close so we're and as before we're sorting the ores up here so the reason we've got a bit more coming in now is because we've got a station down here and every so often a train will come in like that and unload into the station we've got then these four massive warehouses that are collecting up as much of this as much of the core fragments as we can produce putting it into the into the chest here where it's then being passed off up here and eventually we'll go into this warehouse to be added on to all of the other ones great where's that coming from you may ask well down here I have another core mining drill, and this one is set up to um, to run off solar power. And if we zoom out a little bit and look at the power network, you can see that the core mining drill is the only thing is only connected to this solar field here. So that means I haven't connected this to the main electrical network because these things pull 25 megawatts, and that's quite a lot of power. And our electricity network isn't really capable of providing that at the moment. So we're being a little bit a little bit careful with it. And so I've got this. This setup means that the, the uh, mining drill will, the core miner, sorry, will only run during the day, not during the night. But when it, but it will never also, it also never pull any power from the main um, electrical systems of the base. And once we have a decent supply of accumulators set up, maybe I'll come over here and double the number of solar panels and put in loads of accumulators as well, so that it can run all 24 hours a day or however long a day is here, 10 minutes a day, <laughs> whatever. Um, and we'll double the output of it. But for the time being, it's producing a decent swathe of. Um, of core fragments, and those are all going into this, in, into these warehouses here. And then that train you saw earlier will, when this gets up to ten thousand, will sweep round, pick up a couple of thousand of them, take them away. Uh, so I have, I have set this at, at um, as the, with the, um, the trigger point being ten thousand core chunks, even though that's a lot more than is actually required to, to fill a train up, because it seemed like a good idea just to have a bit of, over, 
uh, over over production essentially in order to make sure that when it does come along there's enough in all of these chests because i didn't i didn't build this very sensibly and i haven't balanced it very carefully so as you can see this one has two and a half thousand in it so this one has only has 1800 in it so there's a bit of imbalance there now the imbalance is there from when i initially loaded it up not from um it being loaded by this system. This system is perfectly balanced. You can tell by the balance of that uh, splitter there, there, and there. Those will keep the same amount going into all of them. It's just got an inherent imbalance from from before. So that's. I mean, that's going okay. It 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 it, it works. The train will come out and pick up from there. I built a third one as well over here. Exactly the same system where I've got the um, the station hooked up to the main electrical network. So that's always powered. So it doesn't matter when a train turns up. But the drill itself only hooked up to these um the, these solar panels down here. And this one's working in exactly the same way. These are probably going to be a bit better balanced. Yeah, these have got two thousand two hundred each. So this one's. I, I, I built this one a bit more sensibly. So yeah, the train's coming around, grabbing from all of these. I will probably put in some more of these these systems. And there's, there's room for another one there. What's going on here? Why is there a... Oh, so okay, radar up there. Fair enough, that makes a lot of sense. There is another um, core miner there. Uh, sorry, core... Um, what's it called? Core seam there. Um, it's been sealed, apparently. So I'll need to go in and um, blow it up with a... Uh, oh, by putting, putting a core mining drill on it. That's fine. Core, core mining drill can drill through. Uh, there's another one down here. That's in a slightly dangerous place because there's these biters right there. There's another one down here. That's obviously out in um, hostile territory, so I won't do that. One there. Uh, one up there, uh, which is, a bit, again, a bit hostile. And there's one here, which is in a rather awkward place because it's just below the bus. Now, so the um, the thing about core mining drills is each one will, um, will, will uh, always use the same amount of power, but the more of them you have, the less core fragment they'll produce per time than they're running. So this one, for example, is running at um, 8.6 per second, apparently. I don't know if there's an easy way to um, to check this. I, I think there might be, actually. If I go over here to this core miner with my brand new shiny jetpack, if I, if I, pull, this, if I pull this up and then put it down again, you see, that 70% effective thing popped up. I put it down again. Now we've dropped to 57% effective. So you, you lose a bit of effectiveness each time you put one down. And it's based on a square square root system so you, your your the effectiveness of each no the the overall effectiveness of your core mines is the square root of the number of mines you've got so if you go from one mine to four mines you'll double your output if you then go up to 16 mines you'll double it again so you'll have four times one as you say six square root of 16 is four um so you'll get the more you put in the slower it'll run but each individual one will still give you slightly more than if you didn't have it. It'll just be less per drill, which is an interesting system of uh, interesting way of working. Um, and it means that yes, you can always get more of them, but it's more and more expensive for, for the amount. You, you you get diminishing returns essentially is what I'm trying to say. The other thing I've done with this mining drill down here. So this is a thing that Mark, Mark has set up a um, a system here with a sort of a. It's kind of a, a weird sushi belt. Um, so basically, he's got this belt stopped when there's anything on this one, which means there's always some gaps in the belt coming down here. So these are filters, which can be taken away from here and then put into these um, air scrubbers down here, air purifiers. And these pull in pollution from the air around them, and then eventually they will spit out a dirty filter like... Um, I'm trying to find one. <laughs> Like the, uh, these ones here, these are dirty filters. These ones with the, sort of the bit of purple on them, uh, and then they, then as they get back round to here, they're filtered out. They go into a, into, into the uh, into a chest here um, to be picked up by a train and taken away. So the ammo train we've got bring in brings in ammunition, which unloads into these these uh, chests, which go out onto the onto the belt, belt belt to be going to go into all the turrets. It also unloads filters, which will go out here, and these are a lower priority. So the in theory, we're, most of the time, will be these filters will just go round and round and round and round. But whenever there's a gap, perhaps because a um, a, a uh, an air purifier has taken one and then will have exported a dirty filter instead, then an additional new one will come in off the belt here, and so we'll always have a nice steady supply of them going round. Um, and the, um, because there's all these gaps in there, that means there's always room for uh, for a purifier to output its dirty filter back onto the bus, uh, back onto the belt, sorry, and, and and pass it around and have it be taken away. And as you can see along here, we've got all of the um, all of the turrets grabbing the ammunition for, that they'll need. So these filters, as I say, they get loaded into the ammo train along with everything else. And here we've got the the standard setup where we're we're checking on what's in the what's in the system. So if there's if there's a shortage of ammunition it'll output a signal to the station. Um, in this case, there is sufficient ammunition. I can't actually look at this because we don't have any... Um, uh, we don't have the navigation satellite yet. But we've got 
1600 ammunition that's enough so it's not calling for more we've got enough filters so that's called not calling for more and we don't have too many um, dirty filters so we're not calling for a train to take them away which is why we've got some red lights flashing here to say that this station is currently closed for business we don't need a train to turn up so it's fine we can just leave it we leave it closed and when any of those numbers become unacceptable it'll call for a train which will come in and sort things out the train goes to here, the re outpost resupply, where we've got a nice steady supply of the um, filters being brought in and ammunition as well. The dirty filters are then taken out here. They go up this belt here to here, where they are being cleaned by these assembly machines. The cleaned filters are then put back on a belt to go back down here, where they're fed in along here and then fed in by priority into this chest here to ensure that these ones will get reused before we before we start pulling in any, any new filters from, from, the, from the factory. Now we've also got a, a chest here acting as a buffer for this so if we do find that we're pulling it that there's um, too many um, being cleaned and, and, and not enough new ones coming through we've got somewhere to keep those. So, But at the moment that isn't an issue. What is a noticeable issue is that this this line here seems to have grown a significant amount. This is longer than I would um, like it to be, which probably means it's time to put in an extra couple of machines working on this, this recipe here. So when these, as these machines run, they, they produce um, dirty water. That's passed through into the filtration plant. And there are a number of recipes you can use for dirty water, uh, which is, no, dirty, dirty water, this one. So dirty water um, is made in a number of ways. So you can then process that and you can turn it into stone, iron and water, or you can turn it into and copper or and raw metals or put it in a barrel or or just turn it into stone. Oh, oh interesting, you can void it in a splare stack just to get rid of the water and you get stone out instead. So you can void the liquid part of it but not the solids part. That's quite interesting. But we've decided it's worth having, you know, that extra little free supply of iron or we might as well hang on to that. So and at the moment we're using more iron than we are using copper or uh, rare metal. So we decided that the iron ore was a sensible one here. So then we pass the water back around to reuse, use it for the washing again and it can be used for various other processes and the uh, the iron and stone are then passed up this belt here and along here through the um, pyroflux processing here which has a very similar recipe that occasionally outputs stone and random other things and then up here where it just gets passed into the um, into the warehouse of sorting up here where we're dealing with everything that comes from core mining so this is all quite having all of this together is quite a neat system that just get means all of the sort of the raw ma raw materials that are getting produced in sort of weird complex ways just get passed into this warehouse which then, as I was discussing before, sorts them using these um, loaders out into iron ore, copper ore, stone, rare metals, coal and, and uranium. So they get neatly dealt with without having to worry too much about um, exactly what proportions of what are being fed in. And this, these sorting systems are really nice. They're, they're, so, they're so easy and simple. I've, I've used these in a few other places as well, just out of laziness. Um, but like for, for here, it, it, it's just a, it's a trivial balancer because if you put a number of input belts in like this, here's some more core fragments, um, a number of input belts and a number of output belts. It doesn't matter what proportions are coming in, whether they've got four inputs, four outputs or six inputs, two outputs, whatever. It's going to balance everything and it does it in a really small self-contained unit like this. It's just really, really nice. Um, so I've got quite fond of doing doing things this way. These loaders, that's just an, a great use for the loaders. That's pretty much it. I, I mentioned that I've now, we've, I've now I've now got a jetpack, which means I'm not relying so much on the um, on the on the um, Spider-Man to get me around. Uh, it's, the Spider-Man is still great and good fun, but it's um, it's a little bit annoying over long distances. The jetpack is a bit easier. The uh, so that means I've got that's because I've got modular armor now, which has allowed me to put things in my jetpack. So now with the advent of us having bots, I've got a robot port in there. I've got a portable generator that runs off this. Um, processed fuel. I've got the jetpack, which also runs off the processed fuels, and getting through that fairly quickly, and a battery to just meet, uh, to buffer the um, the power supply. So when I'm using the uh, when when the robot port is having a bit of a bot frenzy, it doesn't it's not relying on the small portable generator to keep it going because that has a max output of 200 kilowatts. This is a maximum consumption of two megawatts. So having some sort of buffer between those is is, is rather useful, and I felt this was a a good balance for my for my armor for the time being. This is a, a large battery, which is better than better than two small batteries and takes up the same space. So that's been me. Mike has been working hard on the smeltery. So up here, as you probably remember from before, we've got these um, these streams of ores coming out here. Uh, that could be tidied up now. We've got cliff explosives, but we probably will never bother because it doesn't actually matter. So those are all being fed in up here. As you can see, we're not getting through quite the sort of rate we've designed for up here. So we've still got a lot of ore being brought in from the uh, from the train systems. 
But the priorities are set up so that we will always use the free stuff that comes in here before the expensive stuff that comes in from here. So up here, that's producing um, iron plates, which are being fed down to the station. Here we now have... Okay, these are basically... We've now basically filled up these. Um, oh, sorry, no, sorry. We've basically filled up these two. These two at the bottom are still filling up. They're um, about two-thirds full. So we've got... But this train is just sitting here. And the fact this train is just sitting here means... That, and saying destination full like that means that there are no stations currently asking for iron, iron plates. So we've got to the point where... We're almost caught up on iron production. The train, the train is happy and caught up, and we're now just filling up the buffers. So that's that's a good position to be in. Copper is still here, and these are all still running off the old um, uh, iron furnaces and processed fuel. But we'll talk about that in a moment. So, but the copper is running in similar way. There's no train here, so that makes me think that the copper train is busy taking ore, ore away, and there's very very little in here. So we are a bit short of copper at the moment. Um, Probably because these, I was going to say, these stations are empty. And that implies to me we don't have any separate copper mines. We are currently just running off what's coming from the um, uh, from, from the core mining. And that doesn't seem to be enough. So we're going to have to have a look at that next time, I think. And maybe try and establish some proper copper mines. But if we look at these... No, there are no trains. There are no trains working for the, uh, for the copper um, the copper drops. So it is literally just coming from the uh, core mining. So at the moment, that's why this is, this, that's why this is very, very slow and in, in, in massive demand. Moving on, we've then got the stone drop-off station here. So we've got a station dropping, potentially dropping off stone, except once again, uh, we don't have any trains running to here, either high or low priority. So we've got the same problem here, where we're just running off the uh, off the stone that's coming in from core mining. And that we're trying to make into stone bricks, which we have... Oh, we've got a decent supply of those, and presumably there's... And there's no... Oh, and there's no train coming and picking them up. So, you know, that helps as well, I guess. Um, so that's yeah that's being brought in here stone st stone bricks are being made here in this smeltery and then above it we've been, we're now also making steel so we've got the iron is also passing along here this is a new smeltery area we've got uh, from from the last session so we've got here we're making the iron plates for the for the steel and then up here Ah, yes, here we've got um, wood being brought in from a... I'm, I'm kind of exploring what um, uh, Mike has been up to while he's been building this, because I wasn't paying all that much attention to it. So he's got a massive row of um, greenhouses here, producing a nice supply of wood, and that has now filled up to capacity, so that's worked well. We've got all the wood we could need. And we've got uh, coal being brought in up here to go into all of these smelteries to be made into, into, the, into the coke that's needed for making steel. Um, this is now also backed up and and well it's it's run it's right yeah there's a there's a plentiful supply that most of the machines are asleep this is now being fed up into here in order to make the steel where there is an insufficient supply of iron so this is this is running slowly because we don't have enough iron flowing in along here um but we're made we are gradually making steel and as you can see we've got the electric smelting machines up here um because probably it's, it's a bit too much of an effort to feed in to that many different supplies of fuel. Actually, no, it's not. This this could run. This, if these were the old, if these were steel smelteries, they could run the burn the coke in order to produce the um, the steel. It's a bit wasteful, but it could be done. Um, and so, but we've we're now ready to start modernising, uh, which means at some point Mike is probably going to go through all of these and upgrade them to uh, to, to to electric furnaces, and then we're going to have a massive burst of demand on the electrical supply and that's part of the reason I haven't started running the core mining drills off it as well because our electrical our power supply isn't going to be able to keep up until we upgrade to maybe nuclear or something like that so this is making a very slow trickle of iron of steel which is going in down here and as you can see this train is filling up very very slowly and that's why there is a massive shortage of steel down on the bus for making those rocket parts I was talking about and it looks like yes we've had a um had a, and I had a meteor strike on one of our um, greenhouses down here, but the bots are repairing it, so that's not too much of a problem. We, I think we need to get um, repair packs onto the bus as well, so the bots will go in and do that. So yes, over here, that, that is over here, that is now making steel. In theory, we are making steel. In practice, we don't have the throughput we need here yet. However, I suspect once this fills up, which isn't far off, then this will fill up. So we've got a lot of buffers to fill up. But once that happens, this will then also back up and we'll have a lot more of the steel going off this way and heading over to here to make the, uh, the iron ore, sorry, will be heading off over this way in order to make the steel. So, yes, at some point in the future, this will work nicely and be everything will be hunky-dory. And then we'll realise that we're still not bringing in, in enough ore and have to upgrade it again, probably. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So next, the next one is, uh, what's this doing? Oh, this is, this is, this is cooking the, uh, the, the uh, rare metal ores into, into rare metal ingots. So that's, that's fine. That's a basic thing. We're, we, we're st still, using the, um, still using the basic processing here because we didn't have a huge number of... Um, of, of electric furnaces at the time, so those those that will come later. 
Um, but that means we are now filling up down here. We don't have any use for these yet. So at the moment, we're sort of partly using this just because we have so much uh, rare metal available, that we, or rare metal ore available, that we want to just get through, get deal with it a bit and get it, pack it down into a slightly more well, a slightly more compressed system. So we did previously have a lot of storehouses along here, um, holding all of the rare metal ore, but we've managed to get rid of that. We've got rid of those now, and we're just turning it in, into the ores. We're also turning a, a chunk, of, a decent chunk of it into a landfill down here. So we've got, um, I think when we have too much in here, the overflow is being passed down here. That's what this circuitry is for, down here in order to make landfill. We've got 1,400 of it, which is... A start. We're going to need a lot more of it than that because this lake is in the way. But that's a a problem for for, for a little bit later on, because the next thing that's being done is then we've got all of the um, the stone being dealt with. So actually we've got stone drop off over here for historical re. Oh, because we're making the stone bricks here. We're then passing more more stone along here to be crushed into sand in order to be made into glass panels. And then up here we've got quartz being made because this is the sort of the, the precursor to make it into silicon. And as you probably remember from my from the last uh, episode, I was talking about down here. We're making the we're doing the crushing, making it into quartz, making it into silicon. But this is far too slow for our needs. I, I say it's far too slow. We've got we seem to have it backed up here, but that must be because we're just not doing enough process enough process maybe we're not making red circuits quickly enough but anyway we need to have this moved off the bus because this is so silly um, and have the silicon being made somewhere else glass being made somewhere else and just generally moving things off the bus where possible and and and, and removing the the demand on the um, on the supply here so now we've got glass being brought in here we want to have silicon being brought in here and probably other things as well so this would be steel probably so this is the usual thing where you start off making some of your products in in the bus area so here we were making we were making steel in here we were making iron although we still are apparently i think that's just to get rid of the last remaining iron from this little iron mine down here um similarly with the stone bricks and the glass we're, we're just using up the um the stone patch that's around here so i don't know yeah i don't even know where it is um but we're just trying to get rid of that rid of those patches and and um, push it all but then we'll want to make all of the raw materials off the bus and bring them in like this so this should 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 be a much nicer way of doing it all. Um, and yes, yeah, so that, as I say, is going to this is going to be producing all of the stone-based products. So we've got the bricks over to the to the east. We've got glass here, quartz up here that's going to be made in silicon, and we can then and then we'll probably start producing red circuits and green circuits somewhere else off the bus as well, just to keep things just to keep things tidy. And because it's making the green circuits on the bus is always it always feels like a really bad idea because it ends up putting too much strain on the copper supply on the bus um, and that causes problems elsewhere with other things that are requiring the copper so generally i feel like it's a good idea to start moving these things off as and when you can and this is the sort of the, this is sort of the process we follow it's a process i followed always or in generally in the past and we followed it in the industrial revolution playthrough i followed it in my space exploration 0.5 playthrough so you end up with little towns then like this one here that mark has made where we've got a train bringing in coal, at least when there's any available, which there apparently isn't. What's going on here? Why are you just sat there? It's because there's a signal missing up here. So <laughs> right, as long as the um, processed fuels train is in the station, the uh, the uh, the coal train won't come in to drop them off. So we need to put in signals there and there. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, all right, there and there. Um, and then once we've done that, so at the moment, as you, as you can see, when I when I pick up one of these signals, uh, the blocks aren't set correctly. This, this whole, this whole, both of these stations are the same block. So what we actually need is for this train to come in here, drop off the coal. It'll come up here into the stations. We'll feed it back. It'll get pr processed in the fuel, fuel processors here, and then it'll come out here. And this can then be used for for smelting, where where we're still using the old smelteries. It can be used for powering trains. It can be used for powering jetpacks, all that sort of stuff. Because when you run when you run coal through this this processing facility, you get a boost to the um, uh, amount of fuel. It's, it's, it's a ten percent boost to the amount of energy it's got in it. So we want to run everything we can off the processed fuel if we can, because you get the free ten percent boost on the energy supply with it. We may run this later later on off oil products. We will we'll see how that goes. See what we've got too much of. Um, but but the thing is, this is flexible. This can run. This we can bring in any product we want here and dump it off, it, unload it here, and it'll be pre-processed into the into the processed fuel, and then used elsewhere in the base for all the things that are needed. That said, the amount of this stuff we're going to get through is going to be drastically reduced in the future as we start to move away from the um, steel smelteries and away from burning fuel in order to generate power. So 
hopefully we'll get onto nuclear power at some point in the not too distant future. Let's have a look. How far off is that? Uh, uranium processing. Ah, oh, nuclear power. Here we go. So it's, um, well, we need advanced electronics, centrifuge, uranium processing, then nuclear power. That seems to be everything we need. However, we are going to need yellow science in order to do any of that. So it's probably still going to be a way off. So that means that this processed fuel system here is going to be useful for a bit longer because it'll be what we use to provide these power stations. As you can see here, there's the station for it. And the power station down here. Yes, here as well. And anywhere else that's, that needs, needs to burn things. Now that we have um, robots as well, that means we've now en we've now developed the um, the concept. Well, actually, no, we've already had the concept of a chest of shame, and that's where you're you're running around merrily, and you realise you've got a load of nonsense in your inventory. Like for some reason, I've got some glass, I've got some iron ore, I've got some steel plates, and so on. All of this stuff that I don't actually want to fill it cluttering up my inventory. So in the past. In theory, you run along the bus, you put it into all the machines that, that need that thing, or you find the, the correct storage place for it. You, you, you put it in there and, and, and just get it out of your inventory. Once you've got um, logistics bots, it's much easier because you just say, well, I don't want that, 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 I don't want that. And it all just goes into your trash slots down here. And if you're anywhere near the base, uh, if, if you're actually in the RoboPort coverage area, like I am now, then you get a little. I am. I? Yes, I am. Then you get a little flood of the logistics bots coming in. And anyway, oh no, they're clouds of bots, not individual bots. So they, the bots turn up like this. They grab all the stuff out of your inventory like that. And as you can see, that's now all gone from here. And they will take it off to a chest of shame. We have these warehouses of shame over here. So we're in the moment we're, we've got a, a, a certain amount of coal and um, uh, heat shield tiles, ores, even some even some um, signals for some reason. And these these will get loaded up with all of the miscellaneous things that get get either taken away by people doing what I just did, or by a, by deconstruction being done on the on the on the bus. So for example, if I if I deconstruct something like these belts here, they're not required. If I get rid of those, and construction bots come out, they'll take those away. The the resources will be taken away to the uh, to the to the warehouses of shame. Uh, you see, there's even more random nonsense in that one. They'll get put in there. Now, Mike has apparently been being very dutiful and trying to keep these things emptied and sorting sorting them out. Now, for some reason, he's been doing that by going up, grabbing the stuff out of them manually and taking it to where it belongs. Unfortunately, he hit, well, fortunately, he has now realised that this is a never-ending task and is just unrealistic. You can't do that. Um, we're more than capable of filling these things up faster than they're um, the vast faster than they can be emptied. Uh, and now he's been blaming me for all of this, but I think it's only partly my fault. The correct way to do this is to put down yellow chests um, by all of these uh, things. In fact, if I, put, if I can put down a yellow chest, can I put down a yellow chest? Do, are, we, are we even making yellow chests? I don't know if we are. No, we're currently only making red chests. Okay, well, do something about that. The correct way to fit, fix this sort of thing is to put down a yellow chest, something like, like this, for example. And then tell this one to filter on iron plates like that. And this means that now any iron plates that get picked up, well, apart from any that are in the warehouses already, so we'll have to go and you have to then go over and clean out the warehouse of iron plates like this. So now that there's no iron plates in that warehouse and there is a filter set on the chest down here, which I put in a silly place, but this is just for, the, for demonstration purposes. Now, if we dump a load of... Oh, it's already in the trash lots. Right. Okay, so now the logistics bots will come over here. They'll take the iron plates away from me and they'll automatically put them in this chest here, which will then be fed out onto the bus and then used up as normal. If you do that with all of the different things that are being... Um, being produced, then that will get rid of everything out of the out of the out of the system. You won't, it'll no longer go into the chest of shame, and this is the correct way to do it. Um, now there is one slight downside of this of this system. Uh, in fact, there's a, there's, no, there's a couple of downsides to the system. So yeah, the downside it won't take anything out of the chest of shame over there. The, the that's in, already in the chest of shame, and if the, and if this fills up, then it'll cause problems as well. There's a few few little issues like that, the, and it's also not really practical for things that don't go on the bus, like these these poles. Now, the, the actual long-term correct way to do, deal with this is to put in the green chests, the um. Here we go. The uh, the buffer chests, these ones, the green chests, because these work both as a effectively as a red chest and as a blue chest. 
So they will provide stuff to, to the bot, to the RoboPort network to, for the uh, bots to come and take stuff away in order to do building or to supply the player. But they will also pull things out of yellow chests and out of um, and out of red chests, I believe, in order to keep themselves at the level you've specified. So if you if you tell put one of these down and tell it to keep itself at, say. 2000 but the um but the inserter that's loading it up is set to only keep it at 500 or something like that then it will always have room to pull in more if they get released by deconstruction or by people throwing stuff away but they but then always but they'll always have stuff available in them for for actual construction projects or for supplying the player as well so at the moment we can't use these because these are uh, we can't use those those the green chests um, because they're gated behind a lot of science. So not only do, do we need rocket tech cards, we also need to have gone gone to space. We need the space science packs and the utility science packs. So we've got we've got quite a long way to go before we get these. And lots of people are complaining about this. They they seem to think that um, it, it it's inhumane having to go to space without having uh, a full logistic system available. I Personally, I disagree. I think as long, now that we've got the red chests and the yellow chests, we can do everything that I feel that the logistics system desperately needs. We can have construction bots that will build stuff for us. We can have ourselves resupplied automatically by the by the logistics bots. So that's everything I really, really need. Yeah, sure, you can't have um, uh, blue chests that are supplied by the log logistics bots, but I don't really use them very much anyway. So I don't, I don't care. We also have a friendly biter in the middle of the um, in, in the middle of the base, which is a little bit weird. Um, he, but he's, he seems to be standing there reasonably happily, so I'm not going to worry about him too much. And it's, it does say he's a friend if I mouse over him, so... Yeah, um, friendly biter. Other things. So, markers... So, as I, I, I was saying in, in the last episode, when I when I got the... Um, cobbled together the robot production over here, I did... I did somewhat deliberately did it to a, a sort of very, very... Um, base proof of concept level so we weren't making we, I had sort of one machine making the uh, making the flying robot frames one machine making battery or maybe a few machines making batteries one or two making the uh, making the big electric motors and that was obviously not enough so Marcus came in in between uh, between streams and has seriously boosted the, uh, the, the, the 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 throughput of everything so we've got a lot of flying robot frame machines now um, so when we have demand on the robots we can make them make them a lot faster we've got a lot more machines making batteries because they're used for quite a few things we've got a lot more machines making large electric motors although they are currently limited by the steel supply but there's lots of machines that are able to make them so that's 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 been very helpful and we've got the standard we've we've limited the number of robots that can be produced uh where is it here here we go so we've got the um these inserters are set to insert if x is less than 250 or if z is less than 500 and the way that works and those those signals correspond to the number of available logistics bots and construction bots so if we ever have fewer available bots than those numbers then these machines will kick into gear and start producing the relevant type of bots we've got two robot ports here because in um, crastorio you have very little storage space for robots in a robo port so it was quite it was if it, the, these numbers would have caused one of these bot uh, robo ports to fill up completely uh, and then the other one would be getting then the other type of robot will go well oh dear i can't make any more robots so we've got separate ones for them to feed into so that's fine and great i i, I also set up a load of uh, solar panel production here because i knew i was going to need a lot of it for the um for the mining uh, for the core mining drills so that's running again this seems to be running pretty happily it's got it's actually got all it's managed to get all the steel it needed in order to get this up to the the uh, 500 solar panels i requested but if i start using them then again we're going to have the standard steel problem that we've been seeing everywhere else uh, what else mark has also been doing the uh, oh he's, he built the red chests and has replaced all of the all of the chests on the bus with red chests so we can now be supplied with everything we need which is great uh, he put up the sushi filter for the air filters as i said earlier and the fuel processing and he got rid of the old steel production because it wasn't needed anymore because we've got the new steel production system and we've not got any iron ore being fed in there uh, Tristan has been working with the railway systems as usual, so he's been um, building up additional stations over here. So while while Mike has been building up, as, as I said before, it's the above and below the um, the belts thing. So Mike has been building up the uh, the smelting above the belts. Tristan's been working on the stations below the belts. So we've got he he's been putting in these 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 high and low priority systems for the for the ores that are being brought in. He's got we've got uh, trains train uh, stations set up for for dealing with stone and co bringing coal in for the uh, for the steel and so on and so on and so on. He's used up. He, oh, he set up the uh, landfill production using up the rare metal, um, and he's also been. Uh, and also on the subject of st uh, trains, we've now got stations down here on the on the bus that I touched on earlier for iron iron plate drop off, fuel drop off, coal drop off, copper drop off, steel, glass, silicon, and Kalyan Ard. Uh, 
on, on, a, on, a, on a dot here drop off as well. That's um, that's good. So all of these are now being fed down. Well, all the ones that have got stuff coming in on them at least are being fed down onto the bus. There's a bit of a tangle and a mess around here, but once we get rid of once this coal, sorry, once this stone supply has been used up, um, and once the and once we've got glass coming in uh, from here, we'll be able able to get rid of all of this nonsense around here and just t tidy all of this up, and and, and the belt, belt belts can go through a bit more neatly and easily. And without sort of random under undergroundy bits like this, this is this is this is fairly horrible actually. This should be should this this pipe production should be somewhere else, and I think it might already be somewhere else. It's just been cobbled in here as well because people because uh, the left hand and the right hand weren't talking to each other properly. <laughs> He's also tidied up the rail the railway lines that were going out here, so we've got ch proper chunk aligned trains systems going along here. There's a bit of a mess still. It's not quite finished because as you can see, there's another line coming along the top here. Um, but no doubt this will get sorted out at some point. Um, we don't. We did before have about five or six lines coming along here, but we're now nice and neat and chunk aligned. So this is this is all all done properly and neatly. Tm. He's also created a, a train building place down here called Like and Subscribe. Uh, this this is just a, a, a small a mini station that will fuel up a train and allow you to drop in if you're building by robots. This is presumably in the Roboport coverage area. It it is indeed. So you can you can say build me a train here by just doing sort of a copy paste like this this and that will give you a functional three length train uh, from the rover ports and then you can which you can then which will get automatically fueled and then you can then dispatch off to go and do whatever you need that train to do so this is a yeah that's a, that's a good idea I've never never bothered doing this before but actually it's a really good idea because it means you don't have to worry about fueling up the train for whatever system you're putting in so I like that that's that's a nice idea he also reports that um, sadly this in the last stream there were no additional deaths so the death count still stands at eight for mark sorry eight for mike four for mark and one for me uh with the deaths coming from mostly from worms and one from a train so we've um, managed to survive the uh, the last stream probably because mike was mostly building down here rather than mostly fighting up here so well done everyone there for not dying um <laughs> I'm, I'm sure people carry on watching anyway so we've got some things to do for next time. I think it's probably worth continuing with the uh, expansion of the, the core mining, as I was saying earlier. So this basic setup with the, the station, the drill, and the uh, and the solar panels can be dropped in here, hit here, here, here. Um, maybe down here and here if we expand that way a little bit, although not particularly soon. Maybe up here if it becomes safe enough. We shall see. There's there's plenty plenty of room to put in additional um, core mining drills. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, whether we whether I would feel the need to do that. What else are we planning to do? Uh, air filters need to be go be put in on more of the walls. So southwest and north southwest wall, that's this one. That needs air filters along it. Let's have a look at the pollution. Um, because there's pollution coming crossing over here and starting to drift down towards these biters. We could probably do with some more air filters in this area down here as well. Um, over here, we're doing quite well because as you can see, this is completely clean because this has air filters all the way along it. Now, we're using them a bit wastefully because we are just having them running solidly all of the time because we don't know of a way to detect pollution, unfortunately. But we are uh, we thought we might as well just clean this all up and, and not worry about it too much because worst case, we end up using a little bit extra power and we generate a little bit more iron. So, who cares? Also got the air, air filters in here next to this core mining drill. Those three should be capable of using of, of cleaning up this one. So we've got producing 200 pollution a minute. These are cleaning up 75 per minute. So that's 225 per minute between them compared to the 200 this is producing. Um, which means that over time it should clear up the area around it. And it has been because when I dropped this in, I didn't put the filters in straight away. So they are they are doing quite a good job of clearing up all the dirty pollution that's around there. What's quite interesting is seeing the pollution along the railway lines because apparently trains do kick out pollution. I I think that's not a vanilla mechanic. I think that must be a Crastorio or or a space exploration thing. So, but anyway, anything that drifts over this way will be clean. Anything that comes from here will be cleaned up by this. Anything that drifts around down here will eventually get picked up by the um, cleaning things along here. This area, as I said, is horrible and probably needs some more around here because otherwise it's going to drift over here and upset these biters and we'll get to start to get attacks coming around here and evolution and stuff which we don't want. This area really needs doing and uh, this area, this northern wall up here needs, needs, needs doing as well, at least particularly over here. This side not so necessary just yet but probably will be a good idea eventually but this area definitely needs it otherwise we're going to upset these biters. If we could get some more over here as well, that would be nice. Um, we'll see what we can do about that. I mean, it can be done. Whether we will do it, we shall see. These walls along here, they don't need them yet. 
but at some point we'll probably want to want to protect those as well so that's a that's a in in the future i think connect oh so we've got we need yeah we need more stone mining we need more copper mining because as, we, as we've seen in the smelting area we're very short on both stone and copper none of that is being brought in from normal mines and we don't really have enough coming in from here need more rocket fuel because as i said that's running far too slowly it's down here running far too slowly we need to we need to speed this up as, as i demonstrated by putting these in that i mean that that's going to help a lot but then we're going to need some more of these chemical plants to, to speed that up as well um big oil town yes we need at the moment we're doing a little bit of oil processing um here no here here yes so we've got the oil being brought down from the core mining and in from another sta station elsewhere and being we're processing it all into um into, into the things we need and that's that's working okay but it's all a bit sort of squeezed in in a silly place so what we want to do is take this away put it somewhere else and expand it and have it do more things like potentially rocket fuel but certainly have a have a more have a more thorough production of sulfur and plastic going on just get a lube and just generally everything and in, in, in a slightly less crammed in and in the way kind of way of doing it um, module yeah we want to build up modules so we can start putting i think at this stage of the game we're probably most interested in efficiency modules particularly for some of the things like the electrolysis machines down here that are using quite a lot of power um if we can make them use a bit less power then that'll obviously save a lot of power save pollution save having to save fuel save having to expand the power production systems and so on so it's going to be a big advantage there productivity modules are nice but i feel at the moment the pollution ones are probably the efficiency modules are probably going to be a bit more valuable because we only get at the moment we can only realistically make tier one modules um so yeah we're, so these ones will knock 40 percent off the energy consumption which is pretty good two of those in in a machine and you're producing and you're down to the bet the minimum power these ones only add on four percent productivity so i feel they're not so worth it 4% is pretty minor, and speed modules at this stage of the game, we don't have beacons, so speed modules are fairly pointless, you might as well just put in more machines, because you'll get, you get a bigger bonus out of that than you will out of using speed modules. So, yeah, I think here, we'll, we'll probably want to put in a few efficiency modules, maybe we'll scatter a few uh, productivity modules around, but mostly I think the efficiency modules are the way to go here. So we want those, and then yes, for this, this rocket silo, we're going to need to build satellites for that, in order for it to you know launch satellites as it is supposed to so before it makes it before it's made a rocket we can kind of do with putting in a um a sat building a satellite up somewhere what does a satellite even take i haven't looked up looked it up yet um satellite takes oh lots of stuff um i mean okay uh red circuits on the bus low density structures on the bus solar panels near the bus i could bring them over to somewhere around here that's not too difficult accumulators not being made at all so we'll need to start making those and feeding them in what i think i'll probably do is i'll try and have a local bus for local people um that feeds the the brings so in the way in the same way as i've got the pipes here that aren't actually on the bus but are passing things along in a similar sort of bussy way and in the way i've got this this belt going along here and this belt going along here um i'll have i'll probably bring these solar panels along here just above the bus make my satellites here maybe or maybe maybe here because we've got the red circuits maybe make maybe make accumulators i don't know we'll make some some of the stuff around here and feed, feed them some, in order to make the satellites nearby and feed them into here because again not going to need a huge number of these uh need a few like sort of maybe 10 50 100 that sort of number but not an absolutely enormous number so i think having one machine making those is probably going to be okay um accumulated rocket fuel again being made here so i can grab that glass on the bus fine radars they're being made somewhere. It's blooming miles away. I could either feed them, and maybe I'll bring over like a hundred of them by hand, shove them in a box for it, um, or like a sort of a low-tech logistics bot, or possibly make them on site. I think probably bring them over by hand, to be honest. We shall see, though. That'll, that that's something to, to decide next time. So that brings you pretty much up to date. We've got some plans. We've got things to do for next time. Lot, oh, there's always lots to do in this game um, because if you don't know, if you've run out of things to do, you make the next science pack, and that gives you a lot more things to do. <laughs> always the way. Or you have a look through all the researches that have been being done and go, oh, I didn't know we had that, and go and play with it. What's this? Biofuel. So yeah, biofuel is apparently an excellent way of making free electricity. So that's probably something we should look into. Um, next uh, at some point that, that'd be a good thing got advanced radars i've not made any of those we should probably start thinking about that lithium not made any of that what's it, what's lithium good for who knows we shall find it we, but that's one of these things we need to find out <laughs> so 
yes, thank you for watching. Please go and uh, check out this this uh, this video sponsor. That's trefoil.be. They're being kind enough to host our servers for us. And if you go along there and and um, sign up using, it to, if you go to the link in the description, uh, trefoil.be/slash Lawrence Plays, and then sign up using the code Lawrence Plays, you'll get twenty percent off. So you get a, you get a bonus because you get a cheaper server. They get some business, so they're happy. I get a kickback, so I'm happy. So everybody's happy. Head along and um, yes, definitely sign up for all the servers you can need there. They've got Factorio servers, Minecraft servers, other games that I can't remember off the top of my head. There's there's lo there's loads of stuff on their side. Have Check it, make sure you check it out. Um, and then uh, come along on Monday to, to watch us actually playing the game. So Monday Monday evening at 7.30 we'll be carrying on with the stream. So doing all the things I've just been talking about. And uh, then on Wednesday I should be streaming Dyson Sphere Program. Uh, lots, lots, lots to do in that one as well. The science is coming along nicely and, and I'm sort of going to space and messing around up there. So yeah, there's always things to, always things to do. Things, new, new things going on in that. Um, there's always there's also also other videos coming out as and when I have time to make them. Uh, we'll see we'll see what goes on there. Just say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, hope you've enjoyed this uh, catch up video, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.